Hello there, and welcome to the tour of the Quetzalcoatlus mechanized dropship, the eighth vehicle in my military utility logistics or transport vehicles series of vehicles. My name is Wimperman, and I am the chief designer, chief builder, chief architect, and chief dumbass behind the Quetzalcoatlus dropship project. Now, let's come out of that view, turn my hood on. God mode. Now, let's address the elephant in the room. <laughs> it is based upon the Cheyenne Utility Dropship 4 from Aliens. There's no getting around it. As you can see by the images found on Google, it is based upon it. Now, Full disclosure, uh, the Quetzalcoatlus does look more like the Cheyenne than I actually intended. Uh, now, it was supposed to be based on it, but my original plan was to have a split tail at the back. So I got some more uh, images to show you. So here is the Crusader Hercules from the game Star Citizen. And as you can see, it's got a sort of a split tail, and I wanted something similar to that. And I wanted something similar to that because I wanted it to be reminiscent of the hind legs of the actual Quetzalcoatlus flying pterosaur job. Uh, unfortunately, uh, when I... So, obviously, I tried that very early on in the build, and I couldn't get the transition right. But, uh, actually, it was this slope that was the problem. I couldn't get this right and allow you to then leave the side. It just, uh, I sort of gave it a bit of an archway here. I mean, you can, of course, drive this way as you, or you could drive that way as you can with the finished version, but I didn't want that to be the only option and it just didn't look right. Uh, I then played around with the idea of having these dorsal nacelles be uh, longer, like from where they are now, but all the way to the back to about there, so that from the top view, it looked more like, I haven't got an image of this ready, uh, it looked more like the Valkyrie dropship also from Star Citizen. Uh, and yeah those that one and that one that one that's not it uh, that so i i wanted it to be uh, that was my second idea was to have it to be quite chunky um oh yeah the the split tail thing unfortunately after that i sort of came up with a solution it was just to make this slope a bit smaller uh, I mean, even this transition took me a little while, but I persevered. So I would have persevered with the split tail. And I sort of wish I had, but it was far too late in the build process to, to change my plan. Uh, and the, it was the same with, with these long nacelles, if, it, if they'd come back to here. Uh, so the problem was it, made, it was going to make the back end too heavy. Um, and in fact... One of the problems with even the split tail was I was already worried about weight and CPU based on the thrusters I had. I mean, it, it may have been able to lift actually. Now, now that <laughs> now that it's finished, it probably would have done. But so my solution to this that I came up with again after I had changed to the single tail to be more like the actual Cheyenne was to just elongate the the bay inside so that the this slope here was actually all the way back here and you did actually end up with a vehicle more like the valkyrie but i didn't think about it at the time dog now it's not a problem per se because i do like the way oh, okay this requires some clarification <laughs> i like the way the actual cheyenne looks in flight but when it folds out its stupid spindly rocket arms and it puts down its stupid spindly landing gear, I actually don't like it. When it's in flight and it's got all that folded away, it looks pretty cool. When it gets all that out, it just looks a bit silly. Um, 
also these uh, actually let me do this first now i'm not entirely happy with this i'm i'm pretty happy but there are some things i wish i could have been able to do that i wasn't able to now the f first thing i tried to do even before the split tail was this was meant to have a hull that was two blocks thick um, to give it more armor and unfortunately i couldn't do it because it was getting really heavy and really cpu intensive uh, the second thing and i'm sure you may have noticed is that the bay is open i tried to get the force field ramps in here and it just didn't work and the the main reason was because of this so of course yeah i'm gonna do this early on so to do to close up this gap it would need to stand up which means you wouldn't be able to step over this you'd have to jump over it each and every time and i wasn't too keen on that so i decided to leave it open but you know there you go uh yes okay now as you can probably tell those of you who do know the cheyenne dropship i have taken some liberties with the design as i said the the main liberty was going to be it was going to be a split tail now the main purpose of the liberties was that on the cheyenne have i still got it open yes i do so the only visible thrusters can we get a back view please the only visible thrusters on the cheyenne is Oh, for Pete's sake, the ones in the back of the nacelles on the top. Oh, we're not. Oh, they're not lit, but there they are. So there, those are the only visible ones. So how it does VTOL is anyone's fucking guess. I really don't understand what the model designers or builders were thinking when they made a VTOL vehicle with no obvious VTOL engines. It obviously just operates by magic. I mean, this thing is supposed to get up to Mark 12 in an atmosphere. I mean, are you fucking serious with all the, <laughs> with all those sticky out bits and the flat surfaces? Yeah, Mark 12, my ass. Right. So one of the thing, one of the liberties I had to take with the design is this tail arrangement at the back in order to get some vertical thrusters down here and also some lateral thrusters for your and sideways. Uh, I've also, so the actual Cheyenne, when the rocket pods are closed, you can just make out on this image, that shape is reminiscent of those rocket pods when they're not deployed. That's them deployed. Eh. But when they're folded up against the hull. Now, I've obviously decided that the rockets shouldn't be there. It should be other engines. So that's another thing. One of the things, as you can probably tell, that I wanted to do to differentiate it with the Cheyenne was I've completely changed how the cockpit looks. It's reminiscent. It's definitely a military-style cockpit, but it's definitely not the one that the actual Cheyenne has. Uh, and I'm quite happy with the fact that it is different. So there we go. Right. That's all the things, all the kind of behind the scenes things. And I'm trying to keep these tours short, but they never end up short. So let's start the tour proper, starting with its role and its task equipment. So its role as a mechanized, oh, God's sake, mechanized, there we go, dropship, uh, is to transport the vehicles of mechanized or mobile infantry units to the surface and back again from orbital spacecraft. And in order to facilitate that task, it has a fuck off massive <laughs> payload bay in the, in the bottom. You could technically say that the thrusters are part of its task equipment because without them, it wouldn't be able to move anything. But, you know, it goes without saying, I think. So speaking of thrusters, the next segment is its propulsion, handling, and lift capacity. Right, so starting with its forward propulsion, it has six medium thruster jets. There are two in the back of the dorsal nacelles and one in the back of each side nacelle. 
Uh, breaking and reverse, it has four medium thruster jets, two in each of the side nacelles and two in each of the uh, dorsal nacelles. Yeah, there you go, get your words out. Uh, lateral thrust, it has also four medium jet thrusters, thruster jet, thruster jets, two in the sides of the side nacelles and then two in the tail configuration arrangement job thing there. Downwards, it's getting a little bit complicated here, sort of. I'll, I'll cover it more when I get to the upgrading. But uh, downwards, it has 20 large tier 2 thrusters. It has six in the top of each side nacelle. As you can probably tell, there is space for a fourth. Or, as some of you might be able to figure out, rip those out and put in more medium jet thrusters. Uh, and there's also eight in the tail, pointing upwards for downward thrust. And for lift, it has uh, six. Yes, that's right. Sorry. It has six uh, medium jet thrusters for lift that come on by default. Uh, now, I will cover that in the signals bit, but there you go. I've just flipped the switch anyway. So those two, and then the two at the front and the back of each of the side nacelles come on by default. There's also four large tier two thrusters in the shoulders. That's because the ammo containers are here and they are expandable. So... I thought it would be nice to get some thrusters at the t at the front just to help lift that weight up. Uh, and it also has uh, four medium jet thrusters that come on with max lift. Those are the ones in the middle of the side nacelles and the ones at the front of the tail. Uh, right, mobility. Starting with its... Uh, I need the thrusters on, don't I? Starting with its maneuverability, and this again is with max lift off. It'll accelerate forwards at 64 meters per second squared. It'll break and reverse at 43. It'll do also 43 laterally because same number of thrusters and same type of thrusters. It'll only do 39 down, but I quite like having less down than up just because it makes landing a bit easier. Uh, and then for lift, it lifts. At, uh, it can travel at 72 meters per second squared, or accelerate, I should say. For its agility, it has 30 degrees of yaw, 31 of pitch, and 55 of roll. So nothing to be sniffed at at all. If you would like to see what those stats look like with max lift on, there we go. Uh, the most important one, I think, is the... Uh, lift thrust increases to 115. Oh, no, I'm going to leave this on. So, this is how she handles. I will give her a quick test flight. I'm going to do a bit in atmosphere and a bit in space. Whee! Now, despite her size, she's not particularly sluggish. And as you can see, this is with pilot mode off. And and I'm having to fight a little bit, but that's probably because of my keyboard. Oh, max speed is 70. As we get into space, it should be, what is it, 110, I think? One thirty in space. Okay. Uh, actually, let's pop pilot mode on and you can have a look and see what that's like. I mean, considering its size, that's that's pretty decent, I think. Right, I'm going to go back to the flattish here. All right, coming in for a landing. And I'm going to press the align to play field and then it stopped. Okay. There we go, thrusters are off. Okay, that's the end of that segment. No, it isn't, because I haven't told you about its lift. Right, so with max lift off, 
this thing will operate in up to 7.4 G, give or take a few kilograms or such. Uh, now, with max lift on, it will lift 569 tons, and the vehicle itself is 193 tons. Now it's the end of the segment. There we go. So the next segment then is its power, fuel, and air. Oh, shit. I forgot about the warning at the beginning. Fuck it. I'll have to do it now. Power, fuel, and air. So, like the other, or some of the other multi-Vs, this has some generators that come on when you turn your shields on. Well, no. <sighs> All right. <laughs> I'm tired and I've had a headache today, so I'm a bit wibbly-wobbly and all over the place. Right. There are, it has 11 generators, 11 large generators. Only two of those come on by default when you either use your keybind or the uh, power switch in the general column. Uh, it then has three, uh, three more large generators that come on when you activate the weapons and shields switch. Now, I'm sure it goes without saying, but if you don't use that switch and you've just used the keybind, the shields won't have enough power to charge and things will explode. So do be careful of that. I will tell you at the end how to change that. If you need to know, I'm sure a lot of you can figure it out, but if you need to know, you can change it. I will tell you at the end. Uh, right, the other six large generators come on with the propulsion etc. switch. So without that, if you just use the thrusters switch here under the general column, again, there won't be enough power and things will probably go pop. Uh, fuel, it has an pentaxid tank and 15 large fuel tanks. Oh, I should say, like normal with my tours, I'm only going to tell you about these things at the moment. I'll show you where they are during the inter interior layout. Uh, air, it only has five O2 tanks because it's not really designed to be lived in for long periods of time. It's specifically designed or intended to take you from a ship in orbit down to a planet and then maybe come back to take you back again. Um, oh, I should also say, and I haven't done much measuring, this was specifically designed to fit my Lynx APC, which, if we have a quick look at it, is clearly based upon the M577 APC, also from Aliens. So the the payload bay in this was made big enough to fit this. Now, it can fit other stuff as well, and I will probably do some screenshots. You have probably even seen them. Um, but that's what it was initially designed to uh, carry. Oh, by the way, that's a nice example of how different the colors are between the uh, multi-Vs or the ground multi-Vs and the AFHVs and the airborne multi-Vs, the colour palette is different. Anyway, O2, five O2 tanks. Uh, it only has one ventilator and one O2 station, and it isn't compartmentalised. The only airtight compartment is the cockpit. Nothing else in there is uh, airtight. Shush you. Uh, right, that's the end of that segment. So the next segment is its weapons, defences and construction. So starting with its fixed weapons, it has a single Gatling gun in the nose. It has two dumbfire rocket launchers in each shoulder, so four in total. And it has the maximum allowed of six Gatling turrets dotted all around. There's one on top of the cockpit, one under the chin, one on the front of each side nacelle, and then two at the back. The astute among you will notice that there are some hard points ready for more, but that's what it comes with stock. Uh, it also has shields, because, uh, hence the pentaxid tank. 
and uh, so armor and its construction. Now, this is the first time I've done this, and I kind of like the idea, so I'm probably going to do it more often. Here is an unpainted version. <laughs> so, uh, there are some slight differences. So, before I painted it, I saved this. And then, as I was painting it, I made a few changes. For example, the windows along the top here, which meant I had to move this uh, hard point back a little bit, which meant I had to change this shape a bit. As you can see here, it is slightly different, but it's not so different that it doesn't give you an idea. So all of the darker blocks in the default hardened steel texture is hardened steel. The lighter gray is steel, and it's almost the opposite of a structural frame. Oh, this doesn't have a structural frame, by the way, because it's a military vehicle. And structural frames on SVs only work with uh, civilian vehicles because the structural frame is usually hardened steel, and then the rest of the skin is steel. But that doesn't really work with military vehicles, but there you go. So, uh, yeah, light gray is steel. And then this whiter stuff, you can probably tell, is carbon composite. There's not a lot. Obviously, the hard points are carbon composite so that they're easier to remove. Oh, by the way... No, I'll do that when I get to the upgrading. Uh, now, there's some on the inside as well, as you can see. This is steel, steel, hardened steel floor. Some of the roof is hardened steel because it's the exterior. Some of it isn't because it's underneath that. <laughs> so there you go. That's what this looks like. You've got a bit of a sneak view of what the interior looks like. But that gives you some idea of its construction. Rather than me having to go around with a multi-tool out, I can literally show you. Uh, carbon composite details on the bottom. There's another thing I've added during painted. There's more carbon composite details. Uh there <laughs> whereas they weren't on this one but it doesn't really matter so there you go that's its construction done so that's the end of that segment so the next segment then is its resource gathering production and storage this should be relatively quick resource gathering it has none it's a combat vehicle production it also has none um you might be able to find space to put in a constructor but it doesn't come with one on board uh, and then storage is fairly limited it has two 2500 su ammo containers it has one large and three small cargo boxes two armor lockers and two mini fridges and that's it <laughs> Uh, right, so that's the end of that segment. So the next segment is its interior layout and any remaining devices. So before I go inside, I will talk about the any remaining devices on the outside. So as with all of my, uh, my ships that are SVs or CVs, it does come fully flight regulation lighting compliant. So you can see some running lights that... Uh, some running lights that are slowly flashing away there. They let any observer know that the ship is powered. Uh, I will cover more of this when we get to the signals and stuff, because that's how you turn it all on. But it also has some nav lights. That's the red on the left, the green on the right, and the white on the stern lights, excuse me, that you can see on ships and planes. It also has some anti-collision beacons that turn on automatically with the thrusters. Uh, and on my ships, they are red on top and yellow on the bottom. And then there are the flight strobes, which are manual, along with the nav lights. They're all different switches, but they're both manual. Uh, and those are the strobing bright white lights that you see usually on the wingtips of planes to let you know that it is in motion. Or oh, I should say the anti-collision beacons let you know that it can move. Uh, anything else? Actually, yes. So, detector, there. Pretend make-believe aerial, there. 
<laughs> uh, oh, I should say, because this is part of the nav lights and stuff, there is also the orientation, uh, the illuminated orientation panels that you see dotted around. They're uh, like the nav lights. They're red on the left on the port, green on the starboard, white on the stern, and like the anti-collision beacons on the ventral section, they yellow on the bottom. There is no top colour. Uh, in these little lumpy bits is rather important. Gravity generator. It's the largest of the ones for the small grid. Along with the CPU extenders and the Wi-Fi. Now they're all here because they're not targetable, as far as I know by the uh, enemy weapons, and they're not near anything targetable. Now, if you do put a turret here, there will be something close, but maybe far enough away that it should be fine. Uh, in this little lumpy bit here is the shield generator. Uh, yeah, I might as well show you this. So in here is the fuel. That's in the tail here. Uh, in the front bit of this, or in the middle actually, is the generators. Again, 11 of them. Anything else? I think that's probably it. So let's go and have a look inside. Now, the only way inside is the ramp into the payload bay. The ramps and the lights are on sensors. Uh... Let me think. So the ramp and the lights are on that sensor. The lights alone are on that sensor. There is also a custom signal for the payload bay lights there. So you can turn them on. Well, <laughs> two ways, but they'll come on when you're pulling up to the bay from the outside. Yeah, okay. Just deciding which way round to do it. Uh, that lumpy bit coming off the ceiling there is where the uh, gravity generator and the CPU extenders are up there. Now we have a big bit for a vehicle to be parked in. And we have these yellow uh, maintenance access shutters. They are all manual. Now I have painted in there and I will talk about them when I get to the upgrading. But for now we're just going to cover the cockpit. As we go in, on the uh, right we have O2 station, one of the O2 tanks, the other four are hidden. The two fridges, one of the ammo boxes, the other one is on the other side in a mirror image place, along with two cargo boxes and the pentaxid tank. Uh, the lights in here are on both that motion sensor and that switch. Oh yes, I should also say that this door is on a motion sensor, that one just there. Two armor lockers, a small cargo box there, another one there next to the ventilator, and a whole bunch of LCD work in here. Which looks a bit like this when you sat in the cockpit seat, and as you can see, I've got some information about what the ship can lift up there. I've got the toggleables in these two screens as I've been doing with all of my military vehicles um, and in fact any vessel uh, then there's a sort of pretend power management screen there by the way some of you are going to be good at enough at maths to tell me that this doesn't add up to a hundred percent it's not supposed to. That's how much percentage of the full amount of power there is. So the thrusters use 54%, and I have done the maths, by the way. It used 54% of the maximum power the ship can produce. It doesn't mean that... <laughs> it, it doesn't mean that... Uh, so when you add these up, the, I think there's like 19% left over, and that's how much everything else... or that's how much is in surplus that everything else, like the sensors and the lights, get to work on. Uh, and there's a power save that tells you what the power save does. And I think I'm going to use that to segue into the next segment, which is its shortcuts and signals. So, starting with the device groups, as usual, the first one is propulsion, etc. And that will turn on all of the thrusters. And, like I said earlier, uh, six large generators. 
please use this and not this. This will make your ship go pop. Uh, the next signal, uh, no, the next switch down is max lift. That will turn on the additional thrusters for high G environments. The next switch down is weapons and shields. And now, unfortunately, I can't use the ampersand in this. It never lets you do that kind of thing, which is a shame, but never mind. Uh, now, that will, of course, turn on the shield generator. Oh, I was already in god mode. It will turn on all of the weapons that it comes stock with. And, as I said earlier in the power bit, it will turn on three of the generators. It's actually the three back ones here. Again, without using that switch, these won't turn on and therefore things will explode. So do please use this. Uh, then there's a... Uh, an undesignated? What's the word I use? Unassigned, that's the word I use. Uh, so, with the ships, I keep the order the same, and I really ought to have done that with the HVs as well, but I didn't think about it at the time, but when something doesn't apply, so I think normally here is something like drills or something, and of course it doesn't come with them, so it's just left blank. Then there's artificial gravity that will turn off and on as I said earlier, the gravity generator that's there. Another unassigned, and the air vents. Now, for those who haven't seen any of my tours, I will go through this, but for those who have, I'll go through it quickly. So if you turn oxygen off and look at the power left, it doesn't change, because although it stops blowing air into the, in, in this, the cockpit, it doesn't actually turn the ventilator off. However, if I turn the air vents off, you'll see it does go up a bit. Now, it is only one ventilator, so it's not going to be a massive saving. On to the custom signals. The first one, as usual, is power save. Doesn't do a whole lot on this. Well, it, it does the same as everything else, really. There's just more of each. So it'll do the motion sensors and the levers that control things like the lights and the doors and the ramps and stuff. So all of that will need to be done manually if you go into power save. It'll also turn off the Wi-Fi and it'll turn off the gunner seat here, the passenger seat. Stupid visual bug. Uh, in, in fact, it does everything that it says on that screen, including the registry displays. So there are various registry displays around the vehicle. The most obvious ones are on the top. Now, in all the cases, it's going to be obvious which LCD projector projects them because it's going to be very close by. Uh, so the ones on the side of the Nasars are there. Obviously, the other side is the same. The ones on top of the dorsal Nasars are the ones to the top right of the number. Uh, then there's one underneath here, which is that one there. And finally, there's one on the back. That one's slightly harder to get to. It's inside. But they are, of course, all... A oh, shit. <laughs> they are, of course, all accessible in the devices bit. Registry displays down here. Now, of course, you can do whatever you like with those number symbols. You can leave them as they are. No one's going to know or will tell you off even if they do. Uh... Or you could change those number symbols to a number that means something to you. They are, however, supposed to keep track of how many of these ships there are. So the first one would be 001, and then the second one would be blah de blah 2 uh, Now, if you can be bothered to do that with your own, just have a look at the workshop item and see which... Uh, <laughs> So, unsubscribe, see how many subscribers are left, and then resubscribe to it, and that will then be your number. It should be, or, you know, something like that. But, of course, it's not going to matter if you get it wrong. Uh, now, the next one uh, is blank. <laughs> the next one down is the payload bay lights. That will turn on those lights, rather than having it as a motion sensor, if you want to control it manually. Uh, the next two down are some of the regulation lighting that I was explaining earlier. So the nav lights are the red on the port, the green on the starboard, and the white on the stern lights. 
The next one down is the flight strobes. Those are the... Hang on, let's turn that off. There you go. We've got some flashy flashes. That's those. Then headlights. There are some headlights on the front of this. There's four on each side. So I can't remember exactly uh, exactly which way round they are, but I don't think it really matters. But I think these two closer to the cockpit point diagonally up and down and then the two further from the cockpit point directly forwards uh, i think now it might be the other way around maybe they point forwards and these are diagonal but it doesn't really matter that's those <laughs> uh right the landing floods there are some more spotlight blocks on the back of the vehicle and you probably even noticed them as i was moving around they're for lighting at the ground when you're uh, deploying or retrieving a ground vehicle is and then finally is closed shutters now i'm sure you've seen them because most of them are orange they are no they are the maintenance orange in the palette there why have i got those selected i don't know uh right so if you act so there are a couple that are on a lever in fact i think it's just that one and i will cover those in a minute but if you accidentally leave one of these manual shutters open flicking that switch will close any and it'll only close them it won't open them again so that's the end of that segment moving on to the next and last segment is its cpu and upgrading now cpu it is 99800 and change out of the 100000 you are allowed this is of course tier 4 therefore uh, for those skipping around in the video, oh, I didn't show you the core. The core is right in the tail, behind some lag shot armor, which is hardened steel. The core is here, accessible through these shutters here. Oh my god. Hang on a sec. This is in the wrong place. Can I just do that? <laughs> yes, I can. So there we go. Oh, now they're a bit too far right. Right, that's all fixed. Yeah, <laughs> I changed the shape of the tail. Forgot to move them. That was a bit of a pain. Uh, so I forgot to mention where the core is. The core is in here. Now you'll notice quite a bit of space in here. And this is one of the reasons why I said on the thumbnail and in the description that this ship might be... Uh, Reforged Eden 2 compatible because there's probably enough space to be putting in some of the Reforged Eden 2 core extenders and stuff. Uh, so there you go, that's where that is. The actual extenders, in case, again, in case you're jumping around in the video, are in this big lump here, along with some other non targetables that need to be kept safe. As for upgrading, so. Obviously, there isn't any CPU left over. However, if you play with CPU off, or if you want to pop in an advanced core that takes away the CPU limits, there is plenty of uh, upgrade points for you to add extra stuff. So, uh, you will. <clears throat> so, thrusters. You will need. Another 12 thruster jets, uh, medium thruster jets for the upgrades I had in mind. So you take away these kind of dark red blocks and the two behind. Uh, I'm pretty sure they are all... Uh, no, some of them are hardened steel just because they protect stuff like other thrusters. Uh, but the ones behind, I'm sure, are just uh, carbon composite. So you take those up, you pop a couple more medium thruster jets there and there. You could do the same on the front. Oh, I forgot the little X symbols on these. Oh, well. Uh, no, I'm not going to bother. Actually, yes, I will. There we go. That's that done. So there are space... Uh, there is space for two more in the front of these side nacelles. Now, you could, of course, put weapons there if you don't want as much braking in reverse, but that's what they're earmarked for. 
uh, and then yeah uh, you would rip up all of these large tier 2 thrusters that point upwards all of them eh, 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 and eh, and, eh, uh, and then put some more medium thruster jets in their place pointing upwards you can take four of those uh, tier 2 large thrusters and pop them in these slots down here to help lift the ammo uh, right then oh hang on turrets uh, rip these bits off you can probably tell by the block shaping around the turrets that that's what's meant to go here as well there are six more dotted around the place eh, 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 and eh. Uh, and then we got all the shutters. So this isn't earmarked for anything. It's just space left over. But you can pop some extra stuff in there. Fuel maybe. I don't know. Uh, and then we have this shutter door, which is controlled by that switch, which is where the fuel is. You could maybe put more fuel or something in there. Or maybe cargo. Then we have access up into the also nacelles not earmarked for anything again but there is space to put stuff in it eh, eh. Uh, then we have this big one up here uh, now you may have noticed I haven't mentioned warp drive this vehicle doesn't come with one stock because it's supposed to be carried by a mothership of sorts and then uh, that's the thing that would warp it around but there is plenty of space in here for a warp drive, among other things. Uh, then we have these doors here. You need to crouch in all of these, but you can expand the ammo containers here. Uh, or put anything else you like. Um, there's You can just make out the front thrusters and there. Now there is another view as well from the other some of the other doors there's two of the other four o2 tanks the other two are on the other side in a mirror image uh, okay in here we got access to the side nacelles uh, again you can fill this with something if you would like eh, need to duck to get in and out and here is the other access I mentioned just now. So here is the downward thrusters on the front and the space for the two more. So you can access them here. And you can also expand the ammo here too. Plenty of space to expand into. And that is why I said that this is possibly Reforged Eden 2 compatible. Because there's so much empty space that you can probably do something with this even in RE2. Uh, now, before I let you go, one last thing to show you, and that is, of course, the colours. Uh, actually, let's just see if it'll work. So, it comes with four primary colours. It obviously comes in this khaki tan colour, but you can change it to this camouflage green, this light blue grey, and I can prove it's light blue grey because it has three more blues than it does the others. And it also comes with this dark blue grey. And again, it has more blues than it does the other. Right. That is the end of the tour. Oh no, there's one more thing to do like I usually do in a tour of a new vehicle. I'm going to publish. I mean, it's sort of airtight, isn't it? And while it's doing that, I'm going to delete the unpainted one. Hopefully it'll work. Right, so there we go. Thank you very much for taking an interest in the Not A Cheyenne dropship from Aliens. I hope you get some use out of it. And hopefully I will see you in another video for a different build. So thank you again. And goodbye.